So we are live now. Just let me share it to our regular pages. Okay, so we are live now. I'm going to switch the uh, microphones to the radio broadcast so you won't be able to hear me until the show starts. And welcome all our viewers on Facebook. We are about to go live on the radio. Okay, so we so are live Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to our radio show, The U Turn Show. I am your host, Richard A. Taylor, and we're here on uh, WBIS 106.9 FM LP, uh, right here, awesome radio here in the city of Greenville. <clears throat> Please go to our, our website, WBIS awesomeradio.org and download all of our play apps on google play alexa and the apple store and also feel free to call in uh, on our live line 252-756-2008 i want to welcome all of our radio listening audience and also our social media audience i want to thank everybody for tuning in i have a very special uh, guest today uh, i've known this this gentleman since i was a little kid and uh uh, he's always been, you know, a, a upstanding man of God, a a a, a pillar of, of of righteousness. So I want to welcome uh, my friend and brother, brother Dexter, Minister Dexter Jones. How you doing, sir? Hey, I'm doing fantastic, sir, and thank you very much. No, thank you, thank you for all you do. And uh, you know, I just want to introduce the audience. Tell 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 them a little about you. Uh, you are actually the author of from from. Uh, your account about 20, 25 books. You said you lost count. Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he uh, has about, uh-huh, go ahead. I said books dealing with different subjects, different um, from relationship to health uh, to finances and um, different things in between. Uh-huh, yep. And, uh, you know, like I was telling him, I said I wrote five books, so I got a long way to go in. Uh, the U-Turn show is normally about people who travel down the wrong road like myself and, and, and made changes. But you, uh, Minister Jones has a unique story. Uh, he actually uh, committed his life to Christ at the age of, what you say, 16? Yes, 16 and a half. Yes, sir. 16 and a half. So now tell me, coming c coming up that at that young of an age, what was the catalyst? What was the motivation uh, for you to make that decision at such a young age? Well, at that particular time, um, I was in in business as a young person. Um, my heart has always been for business. Mm -hmm. And praying and seeking the Lord and trying to get some direction at that time, 
about business. And uh, a man of God invited me to come to a, a tent service because my, my, my sister said, you need to go and talk to my pastor because he's a wise man. He can give you some instructions. Uh -huh. So actually, he sort of tricked me in the matter of speaking and said, well, look, I don't have time to meet with you now. Just come on out to the tent. And so um, I came out to the tent and um, I never got a chance to talk with him. But actually, uh, that was the day that my whole life turned around. And at that tent meeting, he made an altar call. And I went up to the altar and gave my life to Christ. So uh, that, was, that was the beginning. And that was at the Tabernacle Prayer for All People with uh, Apostle Lawrence Bozier. That was the beginning of my getting on the road to righteousness. That was the beginning. Okay, and I and I definitely want to mention that because that's where I remember you as. I was a little kid coming up in Tabernacle of Prayer, and you know that's 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 where you know I grew up. So how how was it as a young man? Because uh, if anybody knows anything about Tabernacle of Prayer, it was holiness or hell? You know, it, almost yeah. everything you know was forbidden. You know, women couldn't wear pants. You know, you couldn't go to the movies, and you know things like that. And I definitely understand what they were trying to keep us from now. So as a young man, how was it difficult for you? you know, being, you know, so young and, and, and having to, you know, not do what you saw other young people doing. Yes. Well, you know, Richard, I mean, it was really a blessing from the Lord because right. of the simple fact um, the lifestyle that I, I had came out of as a young man, uh, you know, I, I did stray you know, as a young man because I, I, at one point in my life, I was really in the drug scene. You know, mm -hmm. as a young man, you know, I was in the drug scene. I was dealing drugs, uh, smoking weed and things of that nature. And um, so when I came to Christ, I needed that sternness. Mm -hmm. I needed that um, law that was laid down. Because if, if I hadn't had that law like that and I hadn't had that holiness of hell, uh, I probably would not have continue my walk with Christ. So mm. that was exactly what I needed to keep me on the street and narrow. And I'm telling you, Rich, I loved it, man. I mean, yeah. I could hardly wait to get to church. I mean, from, from the Friday night services, the Sunday service, the Sunday evening service, the seven o'clock prayer. Oh, man, I, I loved it all. Yeah, you don't know. forget Tuesday night Bible study. Oh. Tuesday night Bible study. <laughs> you know, and even though we got out of church at two or three o'clock, Man, to me, that was just bad. I loved it at that time. You know, yeah. so it, it really kept me on the on the screen and there. Yeah, yeah, and I definitely see the blessings, you know, of the Lord on your life since since that time, man. You you've done a lot, you know. Uh, as we mentioned the books, and actually, you told me that you wrote your first book at the age of eighteen. Yes, sir. Okay, do you remember the title of that one? Yes, uh, that book was entitled "Seeing Myself Through the Eyes of God." Victorious. That okay. was the title of my first book. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and what gave you the motivation as far as you know writing? You know what 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 was your catalyst to uh you know venture into writing? Yes. Well, God had blessed me to be a very studious person, and uh, I love to read. You know, I really love to read, and um, uh, I never wrote much during that time. But when I began to study the word of God and began to uh, saturate myself in the word, actually, it must have been a gift that God had in me, you know, uh, always. But it was awoken when I came to Christ. And, um, and at that point, I really had something to say uh, to let other people know, and especially young people, uh, that they can live this life as well. And I wanted them to see with that first book that you can live victoriously as a young person. Okay. You know, in the midst of the evil and progress generation. Yeah, yeah. That that's definitely a is something that's probably needed more these days uh than back yes. then with the, with everything uh that the youth is facing. Um and uh gonna get into this first topic uh because I know a a, a book that you wrote. 
uh, caught my attention, uh, but I do want to read a little, couple of comments real quick. Elder Harris says, great evening, family. Uh, your wife, Sister Patilla Jones, being at the Tabernacle of Prayer for me at a young age was a blessing from the Lord. And I know she got saved at an early age as well. Uh, Phyllis mm -hmm. Harris says, a man, Claudette smith Mon, growing up in Tabernacle was great. I wouldn't change any of it. And I wouldn't either, uh, you know, regardless mm -hmm. of how strict it was. Uh Eric Harris, God and Phyllis kept me straight in my youth. Uh, and my father, Roger Taylor, thank God for his teaching received at the tab, T-O-P. So definitely thank you guys for joining in already. But it is a subject. Uh, I, I remember I came uh, back to North Carolina in early 2020. I think I stopped by your shop, your your herbal shop. And uh, I was I was out promoting my book, and you, you you blessed me and purchased my book. But I saw your latest book, and it says "Money Answer It All Things." I think that was the title, right? Yes, yes. Okay, and it's it's a subject that's kind of near to me because growing up, you know, in 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 some ways, the the gospel was presented to us like the poor you are, the more righteous you are, or you know, we have we have that scripture where many people misinterpret the love of money is the root of all evil. Some people say money yeah. is the root of all evil. So sometimes it seems like you know Christians, especially Black Christians, have this attitude towards money is we don't supposed to have it. Or, you know, being being somehow rich is a sin. So what yeah. is it that you address in your book or, or not even in the book? What are you, what are your views on, on money and, you know, how, uh, you know, we've misinterpreted that or, you know, have we misinterpreted that? Yes. As a matter of fact, Rick, we have really misinterpreted that scripture. And I want to say, first of all, you know, in everything that must be balanced. OK, it has to be balanced. And that's why the scripture tells us that a false balance is an abomination, is an abomination to the Lord. But a just weight is his delight. So uh, this evening, we want to make sure that we have balance in our talk, uh, especially when you're talking about money, because Ecclesiastes 10 and 19 says a feast is made for laughter and wine make it merry. But money that's all things. So when you look at that scripture, uh, God meant exactly what he said when he put that in Ecclesiastes 10, 19. That money is the answer to all natural things. Now, it's not the answer to spiritual things, but it is the answer to all natural things. I mean, if you need to pay your rent, I mean, money will answer that. If you need to buy uh, your children clothes, it's money that will answer that problem. If you need um, to go to, if a child need to go to college, it's money that will answer that thing. So money is the answer to all things. And uh, growing up in, in the ch in church many times, uh, many individuals uh, try to downplay money. But, you know, it amazes me, Rick, that people try to downplay money, but yet they, those same people will work 14 and 16 and 18 hours a day for money. Why are you working so much for money? If money is so bad, why are you putting in all this overtime uh, to make more money? Mm -hmm. It's because they, they know that money really does answer all things. Okay. And then you have to look at uh, 1 Timothy 6 and 10, where it says, for the, for the love of money is the root of all evil. So when you look at that, that's where the balance comes in. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing wrong with money. Absolutely nothing. Listen, God will not care if you is a millionaire, a billionaire, or a trillionaire. That does not matter to God. God just doesn't want money to have you. Okay. Money, money can be a a um a good servant or a bad master. Ah, I so like that. you I want like money that. to be a servant, be your servant, not your master. But sad to say, many times uh money has become a master to, to most people and it drives them mercilessly, you know, and, 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 and that's where greed comes in. So um, God's um, word is that money is a wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. So okay. money also can protect you, can protect your life just like wisdom can. And the less money you have, the, the less protection you have around your life. The more money you have, the more protection you can have around your life. 
So, All right, and you know, there's also a fine balance, though, because it's another scripture yeah. says that you can't serve uh, God and mammon, and I guess mammon meaning, I guess, worldly riches. But, you know, you have a lot of, uh, you know, I guess, quote, unquote, for lack of a better word, prosperity preachers, which all they focus on is, you know, how to get money and, and the rest. So is there like a slippery slope when, when, when you're talking about money, as you mentioned, balance early on? Where you don't want yeah, to go. Is. Yes, sir. So like you just said, the scripture that said um about can't serve. Mm -hmm. the, the key is you don't serve money, money's got to serve you. Okay. That's key. It's got to serve you. Uh, I say no man can serve two masters. The, the key word there is serve. You can't serve God and memory, mm -hmm. but you can serve God. And let money serve you. Definitely, definitely. See, now, see, go ahead. That's the key. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. see, money is for three reasons, Rick. First of all, money is to fund the gospel. That's that's first and foremost. Money is to fund the gospel to get the gospel out, because the key to everything is God. God is the answer to to life. Um, that's why the Bible said, "But they that do know their God shall be strong." And do exploits. People that don't know God are not strong. So, and the key is knowing God. So, our whole objective in, as a Christian is to let people know about God. Let them know about Jesus. And it takes money to do those things to get to get the gospel out. So, it's to fund the gospel, and also money is to enjoy life. That's the next thing. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes 5 and 19, it talks about how it says every man to whom God has given wealth. So we understand here that God is the one that gives man wealth. It says every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth and have given him power to eat thereof and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. So money is to be used to enjoy your life. It's be, to be used to, uh, to, to take vacations, to, to uh, buy you the things that you need. I mean, man, just enjoy your life. Okay. You know, it takes money to do that. And the third thing is money is to be used to be a blessing. God told Abraham in Genesis 2, 12 and 2, he said, I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. So money is not, you, it's not to be hoarded up for yourself. Money is to be a blessing, man. And when you, the more you have, the more blessing you can be to people. You can't do much for people financially when you ain't got no money. To fund the gospel, enjoy life, and to bless others. That's those are yes. three definitely good uses for money. And before I switch gears, you talked about people working for you know those long hours and almost once again becoming a slave. Uh, too yes. much or you know to jobs how important is it uh for people to develop that entrepreneurial spirit or when did you going back to you when did you develop the entrepreneurial spirit as okay well i'm going to work for myself uh, how long did it take you to get out from under that mindset of working for money instead of letting money work for you okay well you know Rick, most of my life i have been an entrepreneur i started my first entrepreneurial venture at the age of uh, about 10 years old. And uh, when I used to live in West Haven, okay. um, you, you know West Haven. Yeah, what I was. was the, huh? What, did we, what was that business at 10 years old? Because that's. At 10 years old, I was the store in West Haven. I sold sodas, uh, candy, uh, chips, and different things, snacks, and things of that nature. I was, everybody basically from West Haven came to my store and purchased from me. So at that young age, that entrepreneurial spirit was there. And um, I had money at that time when nobody else, no other kids had money. <laughs> and because um, I had a store. So, and of course, my brothers and sisters, they robbed me a lot. But yeah. um, they told me years later that they took me out every chance they got. <laughs> but uh, never I'm still blessed. <laughs> yeah, you got to watch the family. So, um, Switch switching gears for a minute, which is actually, you know, going into the, the entrepreneurial spirit. And once again, you are listening to 106.9 FM WBIS 
Greenville, uh, make sure you go to www.wbisawesomeradio.org and download our apps. Once again, this is the U-Turn Show. Uh, awesome Radio, radio with a spirit of excellence. Now, going back into that entrepreneurial spirit, I think at, at some point you decided to go, and I wouldn't call it the health field, you know, because a lot of people are, you know, real sticklers for, you know, calling people health professionals help but you you some got you you got into health and wellness uh what was your particular reason for getting into health and wellness well you know i've always studied um herbs and things of that nature for uh for about 35 years or more i've been studying herbs and different aspects of it um but i made it an official business about six years ago and rick the way it happens man and see, this is how a person should become an entrepreneur, okay? You never get into business because somebody else got into business. Mm-hmm. You, don't do, you don't do a business for money, yes. okay? Mm-hmm. You do business mainly based on the gift and the talent that God has given you. That's first and foremost. And I, before I got into the, uh, my business, I was managing a... Um, a car wash and February of 2016, I came to my employer and I told him, I said, look, I said, I'm giving you my two weeks notice right now. I said, God's getting ready to give me a business in my hand. I said, I don't know what it is. I don't know when it's going to come. I said, but I'm going to give you my two weeks notice right now so that when this thing hits my hand, I'm out of here. OK, now that was February and um, March and April. Nothing happened. May, June, nothing happened. July, nothing happened. August of 2016, God literally brought a business into my hand. And when it came to my hand, the Holy Spirit quickened to me that this is what God spoke, what he spoke to me in February. I told my employer, I said, this is it. I'm out of here. I gave you my two weeks notice in February and I'm getting ready to go start my own business. So you, you, you should let God lead you into a business. When, you, when God leads you into a business, because every business is not for everybody. Okay, one but second. God, God. One second, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones. We do have a caller. Uh, yes, this is Awesome Radio 106.9 FM. Uh, you are on the air live. Hey, how you doing, sir? Wonderful. How you doing? Thanks for calling. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How you doing, Mr. Dexter? Fantastic. That's, That's awesome. This is some good teaching. This is Elwood Harris. Harry. Um, I have a question, sir, um, uh, for the ones that may not uh, have an understanding of it. And, and, and if you can break it down, so you are a great teacher, and I love the way you dissect the word as well. Uh, what is the difference between a gift from God and a talent? Some may think that, you know, like, some may or I may say my gift from God is to become an entrepreneur. Would that be considered a talent or is it both the same? Well, they are different. You can have a natural talent. Yes, sir. Okay. But a gift is a a spiritual thing that comes from God. Okay. You know, you okay, you can have a natural talent. But I like that. According to Romans the twelfth chapter. Uh, it talks about, I think there's like um, seven different gifts there. And these are what is called um, charisma gifts. And one of those gifts is the gift of ruling. And that word ruling actually means administration. Wow. So you, if you have that gift, then you can administrate. You can do business. Or you can work as an administrator for a company. Now, if you may have, uh, how can I put this? And you will prosper with it. But someone that may just try to do what you did, um, it may not work for them. So that's why, you, first of all, you need to know the gift that God has given you. And then you flow from that gift and, and find out the, the, the business that God will have you to go in with your gift of administration are rooted. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for giving me that insight. 
and clarity on that. That's what I wanted to uh, call in for. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so thank much, you caller. So much. Uh, definitely uh, my brother, Edward Harris, uh, definitely a, a, a great man of God as well. Just read a couple of more uh, comments. Uh, Christy McWillan says she has the gift of giving. Uh, Patula Jones says a talent is natural and a gift is spiritual. And I think that is a great uh, definition as well. Uh, my Aunt Joy Newcott says, praise God. Uh, Patula Jones, once again, said you do business based on the talent and gift God's giving you and not for money. Uh, that's great. My mother, Letta Taylor, says develop your God-given gift. Uh, and there's too many comments to read. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm going to continue on because this is, uh, you know, a subject once again, that, that, that medicine subject, I know that, you know, you, 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 you are very serious about, you know, health and, you know, following you on social media, you post a lot about health and wellness and the importance of it. And, uh, going back to, going back to, to, to the church, uh, I was in a, a ministry one time and one of my white brethren, uh, he said something that just floored me. He said, uh, you know, all these black people, they're, they're in church and, you know, they're catching the Holy Ghost and they're speaking in tongues and they're falling on out. And but then they're dying of high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, heart disease, all and all of these physical ailments. And it just yes. blew my mind because he was right, you yes. know. And, and so so where you know how important it is it once again to to take care of the temple, you know, and, and, you know, once again, like, you know, we, we, that, that is a, almost a stigma, you know, with, with, with churches and people that, okay, well, yeah, they're going to eat the fried chicken, quote the preacher, you know, is, is, is old wait a lot of time. So what, what is your, you know, opinion on, 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 on the fallacy of that and, and how could we do better? Okay. I'll say this, Rick, um, you know, the most incredible and remarkable thing ever made is the human body. OK, um, Genesis 2 and 7 say, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So let's look at this body quickly. Uh, this body is made up of over 100 trillion cells. OK, uh, there are so many blood vessels in our body. That if, you, if you were to lay them end to end, it would spend over 60,000 miles. Now, all this is inside your body. This body has over 206 bones. Uh, 320 pounds of muscles, uh, five vital organs, the brain, the heart, the kidney, the lungs, and the, and, the, and the liver. It is a remarkable machine, okay? And with all this remarkable machine that we have, and we're living in the greatest country in the world, um, but the sad reality of it is the United States that we're living in Rank number 37 as far as um, health care. Rank number 37 as far as health care by the World Health Organization. Uh, in the United States, we have the highest chronic disease burden there is, the greatest obesity, uh, sickness and disease is running rampant in the United States. And it's the reason because um, it's not health care, it's wealth care. Okay. It's all, it's, it's all about the money. It's not about health care. So when you look at some statistics, you find out that 50% of the people in America is going to die from cardiovascular disease. Mm. Some of these things, can, a lot of this can be avoided. 42% of the population will be diagnosed with, at some time with cancer, and 24% of them will die from it. Mm. There are over 20 million people that are diabetics, and we're not talking about the pre-diabetics. 60% mm -hmm. of Americans are overweight. Okay? Respiratory disease is the third most common cause of death and stroke run number four. 50% of all medical diagnoses are incorrect. 50%. Okay. And drug reactions kills 100,000 people every year. And lastly, Rick, people just will not start eating bad even if it kills them. <laughs> And and so and, and and actually the majority of diseases they do come from the food you eat, correct? It, it comes from the foods that we eat, Rick. People are literally eating themselves to death while they're eating the food. Why do you think that is? With, with and with all that knowledge out here, you know, like people would go to the doctor. Oh yeah, he told me to stop eating that pork. 
And you know yeah. that well, he told me to cut back on the fried foods. And well, people will still do it. Where is the discipline? Uh, or once again, people just enjoy that that pleasure for a season instead of yeah, you know, and, and you know, and you okay. know the thing Rick, is people see uh a lot of things is hereditary. Now I said this a while back, and then I heard a couple of doctors say the same thing. They say a lot of things is hereditary. But what's really hereditary it's is the, the food. food you eat. Yep, because you eat what your food. mama eat, and you eat what you, you know, foods are passed down from generation yeah. to generation. I've heard somebody generation else say that. So your, your grandma had high blood pressure, your, gr your mama had high blood pressure, and you got high blood pressure. Nobody is willing to break the once They have to break that cycle. Okay, mm. and once you break that cycle, then you will notice that that person that broke the cycle uh, they don't have high blood pressure. So people literally, man, have got to change their eating habits and not wait until some major disease hits your body before mm. you begin to drink more water. 50% of the population don't drink enough water. Except something as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So you got to begin to change your eating habits. And I tell people some of the, some of the, the, the five or six of the most important things is you got to get away from fried food. Okay. Got to eat fried food. Pork does. You can't cook pork good enough. All right. No matter how good you cook it. Um, fast food. Got to get away from fast food. Um, uh, sodas. Okay. There's not a good soda on the on the planet. Okay. One canned soda has ten to twelve teaspoons of sugar in one can soda. Mm. How can you be healthy? consuming 10 to 12 teaspoons of sugar every single day. And some people drink three and four and five sodas a day. Yeah. So it's the food that we eat. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm not on my soapbox cause I, you know, I, I said, now are you vegan or, or, or are you vegan? Do you eat meat? I do. Now oh. the meats I eat is I eat uh, chicken. I eat, um, um, turkey, uh, and seafood. And some people say that you know you, you need to become vegan, but here's my here's what here's my response to that. Mm -hmm. If vegan was the most healthiest diet, and it's what God really requires of us in this day and time, then no doubt Jesus would have been a vegan. Okay, okay. you know Jesus. That. Jesus ate fish, lamb. You know he was not a vegan. And if anybody knows the body, since he created it, Jesus would have been a vegan. He was not a vegan. So, and as a as a as a, as, a, as a, um, people that are vegans a lot of times, they are also missing one of the most important nutrients or vitamins that the body needs, which is B twelve. Okay. Because that comes that comes through meat. It comes through uh, milk. It comes through uh, things of that nature. So when they're not eating any of that then they are uh, deficient in their health as well. Mm, okay. Okay. And, um, you know, I said that to say, yeah, yeah. I, and, and, and I, and I'm a witness, like I, I'm, I'm not talking about anybody who, you know, eats meat or is unhealthy because I said at the beginning of the year, I was going to try the vegan thing about two days in, I had some fried <laughs> chicken. I just went to uh, Hardy's yesterday. I've been drinking sodas more than usual and uh, what did you say? Pork. I, you know, I, I ate some bacon the other day. So I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not, you know, criticizing yes. because I'm talking yes. to me as as well. So uh, but yes. definitely I, I know these things. though, and that's what I said. I said, I know these things, but I just have to be disciplined enough to put them into yes. practice. So uh, and once again, you are listening to uh, Awesome Radio uh, 106.9 FM WBISLP. Make sure you go to awesomeradio.org and download our apps. And I'm going to switch gears a little bit once again. Uh, talk about ministry uh, or basically, once again, just basically the overall uh, condition of the church. Um, I, 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 I was doing some research last night and I was looking up Saudi Arabia, right? Mm -hmm. And Saudi Arabia. Uh, is a Muslim country, and you know a lot of people talk, you know, bad about the Muslims, uh, or, or Muslim beliefs or whatever. But I, that I, 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 it was three things that I that I looked up 
that was shot, uh, you know, kind of surprising. In Saudi Arabia, there are no nightclubs. They don't have wow. any nightclubs. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think alcohol, if I'm not mistaken, they said alcohol is banned throughout the country. So there's no mm-hmm. alcohol. And yes, also, I, also, I read that said drugs, the use of drugs or the selling of drugs is punishable by death. Wow. And I looked at that and I was like, wow. Now, people talk bad about it. And, and, and if you meet anybody from the Middle East, they are a little more reserved. They are a little more kind. They are a little, you know, less mm-hmm. aggressive, you know, if you meet, you know, the average person. So I just thought about what if the United States was like that? You know, yes. how much less problems do we have? So when it comes into the church, you know, because and I bring that up because the United States is a quote unquote Christian country. But a lot of things we do are not Christ like. And yes. where where does, you know, the church draw the line on being, uh, you know, conformed to the world instead of transforming? And, and what I mean by that, you know, a lot of people sometimes can't tell a quote unquote Christian from. Yes. A sinner, you know, because you know we all do the same things. So, where where do you think you know it it, it could be uh, different, or the, or that line could be drawn uh, from mm-hmm. from you know from 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 being in the world but not of the world? A very good question, Rick. Very good question, and you know it goes back to um, your walk with God. You know that is the key your walk with God. And um, sad to say, but um, a lot of the people that's inside the house of God are not Christian people. They are what they're part of the institutional church. Okay. Okay. Not, not a part of the spiritual church. All right. So that's why Jesus said um, when they talk about the wheat and the tares, he said, let them both grow together. Mm-hmm. I he said, it. and I was going to separate at the end. So for him to say that, that tells me that he, he knows within the assembly, there are wheat and there's tares, there's Christians, there's non, non uh, unbelievers, there's uh, some that are uh, pretending to be Christians, and they're both in there together. And so the spiritual Christians, they are the ones that are living a separated and sanctified, I don't hear that word a lot, which means yeah. to be set apart, life. The institutional church, they are the one that's doing things that's contrary to scriptures. So there's a difference. Just cause we sit inside somebody inside the house of God, mm-hmm. these people may not even really be saved at all. They may just be church goers. Yeah, and and that's what a lot of people I notice do. Like you know, they they say, "Yeah, I go to church." It's almost like a social club, or once yes. again, a tradition. You know, people a go tradition. to church because of tradition. Oh yeah, my my father was a deacon at this church, or you know, my grandfather found a church, but yes. they're still doing. You know, every like if when they leave the church, you wouldn't know, you know, if they go to church or not by their actions. So, um, so not very, and the Bible said a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. See, you look at the fruit that tells you what kind of tree it is. And if I walk up to a banana tree, I expect to see bananas. I don't expect to see oranges. Yes, sir. When I when I come to a Christian. That's, that proclaim they're Christian, I don't expect them to see, I don't expect them to be doing non-Christian things. If they're doing non-Christian things and it's a lifestyle for them, then they are not a part of the spiritual church. They're part of the institutional church. Mm-hmm. And, and and I do have a have to uh Ask, ask this question because a lot of people, pastors get a bad rap, you know, pastors, uh, you know, my father's a pastor and I, you know, I know he walks the walk and talks the talk. So, you yes, know, and I know, I know a lot of pastors who walk the walk and talk the talk and, you know, they're in it for, you know, the, the spread the gospel and, and to save souls. But there's this viral video going, going around 
uh, that I don't, and I don't know if you saw it, but it, it puts pastors in a bad light and put once again puts you know believers in God and and quote unquote Christians in a bad light. Of I, I, and I don't know if you saw it. Did you see the video? Of the young pastor who spit on his hand and wiped yes. the spit on the guy's face. Uh, what is your take? I have to ask you that. I, what is your take on that? It's just, it's just an opinion or question, if you don't mind addressing that. Well, first of all, we, we can't put everybody in the same category. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, what we did was definitely out of it, it was out of uh it was out of character for a, a, a man of God to do such a thing like that. Okay, mm-hmm. especially what we're going through right now with this pandemic. Yes, sir. You know, people yes, thought about that. You know, the spirit mm. in, in his hand and wiping on somebody's face. Mm. Uh, that's, a, that, that's a no-no, man. I mean, yeah. that's just crazy. You know, yeah. and um, so and, and for him to, to do something like that, um, even his congregation after service should have should have asked him about that. They should have. They should have. We need to talk about this. Mm. You know, uh, so you know that's my take on that, man. But that does not mean that uh, you know. And that could have been an isolated incident with him. Yes. You know, could have been an isolated incident, but um, that doesn't put everybody in the same category. Okay. All and right. I think, it, I think it's crazy, man. I think it was just crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know what, what was going through his mind either. And and this is another question before I move move to a different subject, because I noticed, uh, once again, I follow you a lot on social media, and I noticed a post that you put uh, yesterday, with which a lot of people don't touch these days. A lot of people are afraid to touch. And uh, uh-huh. uh, you, you mentioned uh, it was on the basis of a man should be with a woman and a woman should be with a man or, or vice versa. It was something like, or a man should not be with a man and a woman not be with a woman. Exactly. Speaking on the home sex, uh, the, the, the subject of homosexuality and a lot of people, uh, because of, you know, uh, the movement that is going on today, they always call it the LGBTQ, A, I, B, C, D movement. Mm-hmm. And, a lot of people are afraid to talk about it because, you know, a lot of people uh, get criticized for talking about that. But you have, it's you know, good. been 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 one of the few that I've seen. And, and, and I say few because once again, I follow a lot of ministers. I follow a lot of preachers and I have a lot of, you know, minister and preacher friends. But very few to come out and outright denounce uh, mm-hmm. that. And and why do you think that is? And, and what gives you, you know, the 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 ability to stand out and say okay regardless of who don't like it i'm gonna preach i mean or or, or i'm gonna say what this uh bible that i believe in says well i'll say one thing rick is because you know our one aspect of our ministry is the spirit of truth so Mm -hmm. our objective is to always bring you the truth even if it hurts even if it um we get backlash with it because the Bible says you should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And those that the sun set free are free indeed. The only thing that can bring you freedom is knowing the truth. So some people uh, in this day and time, ministries uh, will not speak that truth because in First Timothy, the first cha- fourth chapter, it says, uh, now the spirit speaking expressly that in the latter's time, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So what that is saying that in this latter times, a lot of people is going to depart from truth. And and the, the reason that they part is because of they'll be seduced by demonic spirits that are influencing them to uh, speak other things that's contrary to truth. And then it says doctrines of devils, meaning that in these latter days that people are going to be teaching uh, things that are contrary to scripture. So people don't want that backlash, man. You know, uh, it's about being popular. It's Uh about uh, making sure you love everybody. Uh You know, things that mean. So they don't want to be, they want no confrontation, you know, and that's a confrontational subject. Uh, and you know, hey, I just, I just have to say, it, man, you know that um, any person that's practicing homosexuality, lesbianism, or transgender, according to the scripture, it says they would have their part in a lake with burning with fire. So there are no homosexuals, there are no lesbians, there are no transgenders. 
that are that are, that will go to heaven because the scripture says that the effeminate and um, all those people like that they will have their part in the lake of fire. I mean, it's scripture. The Bible says it's it's an abomination. Mm -hmm. And you know the thing about it, there's many different sins. We know that, but God called this one an abomination. Okay. Fornication is bad. Fornication will keep you out of out of heaven. But he don't call fornication an abomination. He called homosexuality an abomination. That tells you how disgusting, how disgraceful, and how much it has marred the character of God and, and, and who God is in the life of mankind. He says it's abomination. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And uh and you something you said uh about loving everybody. You know, you said, you know, everybody wants to love everybody. But, you know, my father loved me, you know. <laughs> but when I did wrong, I got that belt, <laughs> you know. Yes, sir. I got corrected, you know. So yes, love, it, I, I guess you're saying that you can still love somebody and still offer correction uh, if it goes against Scripture. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Bible said, while we were just, while we were just sinners, Christ died for us. So while we were yet against God, Jesus still died for us, even though we was against God, because he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So correcting you does not mean I don't love you. It means I love you enough to correct you. Okay. Okay. You know, so, man, I mean, you know, you, you, uh, people in hell right now uh you know they no doubt are upset with their family members that did not tell them the truth that homosexuality is forbidden of god and we all got homosexuals in our family there's not a family that does not have somebody that's a homosexual lesbian somewhere down the line somewhere down so, the line yeah. somewhere down the line so what what because we got about five minutes on the radio, but I think we're gonna keep going on social media because I, I think I got a few more questions. So what are other, you know, within about the last four or three minutes, what what are some other ways you think uh that maybe the uh church or the leaders are missing the mark uh when it comes to you know executing or or, or fulfilling the gospel or spreading the gospel or you know living righteously? Okay. Well, I'll say this, Rick. First of all, many of them have not been called have not been called by God to be in that position. That's the first thing. Okay. That's number one. The Bible said He gave some apostles, some prophets, Whoa. some evangelists, some <laughs> pastors, some teachers. So some mean a he limited number. Yeah. Some. It yeah. means a limited number. It means few, few. So many are out of sync in what they're supposed to be doing. Some of these people are supposed to be businessmen. Some of them are supposed to be uh, motivational speakers. So many of them, I mean many of them, mm -hmm. are out of the, um, the call of God for their life. And their whole ministry, most of the time, is frustrating. Because it's they're trying to put a, a square pig in a round hole and it just won't work. It won't fit. It won't fit. Because it's not meant to fit. They're not meant to be pastors. They're not meant to be apostles. They're not meant to be evangelists. But they're going to try to make themselves that. And eventually God says, just go on and do what you can do. I tried to warn you over and over. Do what you can do, but it's not going to prosper. So they're out of place. Okay. That's that's I guess and, and and if that's that that will explain a lot then where people are not you know called according to the purpose you know that God yes, has set out for them and so for our radio listening audience uh what is one thing that you might want to leave uh, with the audience uh you know out, out of everything that we talked about um you know before we log off from the radio okay quickly I would like to say that that Jesus is the answer to life. And you can search the world over, but until you come to a relationship with Christ, 
nothing else you do in, in life is going to matter. You're never going to have peace. You're never going to have joy. You're not going to have true love in your life because these things come from God only. You can't buy them. You can't, you can't, no matter how successful you are, they will not be productive. They will not be producing in your life. Jesus is the answer to life. Get to know Jesus. Give him your all. Run for him. And you will, he will help make everything in your life so much better. It's Jesus. Jesus. Okay. And where can, you know, our, 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 our audience, uh, our radio audience reach you? Uh, or, 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 or contact you because you do, uh, you know, you, 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 you deal with herbs and health matters and also, uh, you help people publish and things like that. So, uh, if, if, if possible, uh, how could, how could, you know, our, our audience, our radio listening audience reach you or get in contact with you or, or, or find out about, you know, what, it, what it is you, that you do as far as products and, uh, business. Okay. They can go to my website for one, uh, which is, um, www.edenwellnessmoringa.com. They can go there and um, and um, that's our store, online store. Uh, they can contact me at my email, edenwellness at yahoo.com. Hopefully my wife will put it up there. And uh, those are the, that's, that's the method that they can contact me in. Okay. And we can and, uh... get back with you. Yeah, definitely. And we, we're going to keep going because I, I got another question or a few more questions. And I know we only have a minute on our radio station. So we're going to keep the broadcast going for a little bit, uh, streaming on Facebook uh, live. But I want to once again thank all of our listening audience here uh, on 106.9 FM WBIS Awesome Radio. Uh, and please once again go to our, our website, www.wbis awesomeradio.org and you are able uh, to view all of our shows not just the U-Turn show but every show that is uh, uh, here at awesomeradio.org and also you can find every show on our app uh, which is the Google Play app, our app store and Alexa and also remember uh, we are also on Roku TV uh, just type in awesomeradio.org and we also on the local uh, GPAT uh, 23 uh, here in Greenville. So uh, there's many different ways that you can interact with our show. So once again, we want to thank y'all for listening and we'll be right back with you next week at 8 p.m. God bless. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, so you can hear me. So we we are still live. Uh, and uh, just to read a couple of more comments from our viewers, Claudette Smith, I really enjoyed the teaching. Thank you. Uh, Felicia Mitchell says, also knowledge. God bless you in abundance. Uh, of course, the website is up there, Eden Wellness at yahoo.com. And the email, uh, edenwellnessmarinka.com is uh, the website. Joanne Robinson says, Jesus our brother Shaheen Faircloth. How you doing, Shaheen? Get to know him. Also said that is good. Uh, Petita Jones, uh, the word some means limited, not a whole lot. Uh, uh, Patricia Rain says, teach it, bruh. Uh, just so many comments. I, there's, there's no way I can go through all these comments. But once again, I want to thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, and, and just a, a, a few more questions. I know uh, one source of division. I see a lot of times in the church uh, other than, you know, racism or classism. Uh, but one subject is, is politics. And I know that that is, it's a lot of division and, you know, I see it and, you know, I really, I'm really, I'm really confused by it all because, uh, you know, we had a big election. Uh, what was that last year, the year before last. And we had a lot of people who served the same God, who, you know, go to the same churches, who pray to the same God at odds about, you know, which one of these lesser of two evils uh, that we always say. And, and, and my question or, or, or my concern is, I don't, I don't know if people uh, know about Jesus's time. Uh, when Jesus uh, was on the earth, uh, Israel wasn't under the control of the Roman Empire. 
and yes. they were, you know, they were very oppressive to the Jews. Uh, but you know, they had their own rulers. So when I see Christians or, 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 or you know, even just you know, yeah, Christians in general or, or, or believers or even black people uh, going back and forth about you know who should be the president. My 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 thought is like, okay, if Jesus was alive today and under the conditions that they were in. Would Jesus really be worried about, okay, who's going to be the ruler over us? Uh, will it be Caesar or will it be Nero? Uh, it really did, doesn't matter, I think, in, in those terms. It didn't matter because they still wouldn't want to be oppressed. And that's what I feel today when, you know, when I, when I see people arguing about politics and, you know, voicing their opinions. Uh, what do you what, what do you think about that division that that, that causes, if you, if you care to speak on that? Well, I would say, first of all, Rick, uh, the bottom line is, is love, mm -hmm. okay? Whichever party you decide that you want to vote for, I should still have genuine love for you as my brother or sister in Christ, yes. okay? These parties should not separate us, mm -hmm. okay? But like I said, with this last election, uh, it separated a lot of Christians. Yes, it did. I had people, yeah, I had people that uh, would not even talk with me, man. I mean, just cut me down because of my, um, the way I said that I would vote mm -hmm. as a Republican. Okay. Yes. So they uh, really came against me, you know. And, and, you know, the, the sad thing is, is that as black folks, we have been bamboozled to believe because we are black, we're supposed to vote Democrat. Mm -hmm. We just believe that's, why, that, that's who we should vote for. Is we should be Democratic because we are black folks. And yeah. um, the way I, I, I know that God looks at this thing, it's not about... Democrat or Republican, it's about righteousness. Right and wrong. Yes, that is the key, Rick. And I've always been Democrat, you know, all my life. Uh -huh. I just became Republican. And it's because of an understanding that God allowed me to come into. And what that understanding is, it's not about the man or the woman. And I'm not looking for my pastor or a pastor to be in the White House. That's not gonna happen, okay? okay. okay. So there's a, there's a man that's gonna be there, or a woman, and what I have to base it on, is not the man or the woman, I got to base it on righteousness. So mm -hmm. when I looked at this thing through the eyes of God, and I looked at the main things that God looks at, which is uh, the church, Israel, um, abortion, homosexuality, I looked at those things. Everything, those four things that God is against, the Democrats is for. Yes. Those four things that God is, is against, the Republican is against. Okay. So it's not it's not a matter of Republican or Democrat. It's, it's, it's a matter of who is standing up for God, who is following the, the principles and the ways of God more. If I got to look at two, which one is following God most? Not the man, but which one is following God's principles? And that is how I uh, I determine it according to script. Yeah, and, and and I I agree, you know, definitely uh, in part because I've been able to sit and watch. I really don't like to get into politics because I sit mm -hmm. and watch. I, and I, I, I see, you know, within the last election, of course, everybody was emotional, you know, with, yeah. with, with it was an emotional time because Trump, he garnered emotions on both sides. And mm -hmm. with that, you know, with, 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 with the emotions, people sometimes don't start start to not think logically. And what I mean by that is because I've I've been here and I and I've seen, you know, the election, everybody, you know, was okay. Well most black people and most Christians were uh most black Christians, I would say, 
uh, from, from the ones I know were all about Biden and Harris. And, you know, they, they championed their movement. And I think that even the first day uh, that Biden got, got in office, he signed an executive order for transgenderism, some, some law uh, for the LGBT. Yes. Uh, a few months, yes. a few days later, he signed a law for immigrants in place. Uh, he yes. signed, you know, recently uh, the Asian hate bill, uh, which, you know, black people has had a, a, a bill that go through the hundred. Uh, Congress 200 times and it still hasn't passed. Uh, they they allocated money for Afghanistan's, you know, fifty yeah. million dollars, whatever it is. So they're doing all of these things for people, uh, but they have a policy of benign neglect, you know, towards yeah. the black people who've championed them in. There's been not one specific bill or legislation uh, that keeps uh, that 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 comes up. Uh, with us, and they they always give us something like okay, a voting voter registration bill or whatever. We're not having a problem voting. You know, black people have IDs, so there there's nobody at the polls. Uh, you know, where black people are too poor, they can't afford ID. If you can't afford a ten dollar ID, then the problem is not voter registration. The problem is economics. So let's don't that 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 okay. Well, that's for black people, or they'll say something. Oh well, they're they're doing a criminal reform bill. Okay, well that gives the implication that all black people are criminals. You know, what I'm saying? so well, no, all black people are criminals. So that's not specifically for us. So my 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 thing, you know, uh, with with this whole thing is like you said, looking at the policy, and you know, it, it just it, it 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 hurts my heart to see us champion for people, champion for people, and we still fall back. At the last of the line, and I'm talking about Absolutely. black people in specifics because that's Absolutely. you know black people were were all up in arms about it. we got to get Trump out of there and we got to get Biden yeah. Kamala Harris in. But what did we get for that? What did we get? What did we get, Rick? That's the, what did we get? See, and they they know they need us. They need the black votes to uh, get them over. And I think it was in South Carolina. If Biden hadn't won South Carolina, then he wouldn't have won. But uh, one of the congressmen, I think it was, he, he really um, championed for Biden there. And, and because of him championing for him, he got him elected at that, at that point. But if it was not for the black people, he would not have gotten there. So they give us tokens just enough to, to pacify us. And, but they they do nothing really for us to help our development of our life. And what's going to happen in the next four years? They're going to use us again. Mm. They're going to make all kinds of promises. I mean, th this is something that's going on, been going on for years. It's been going on for years, and that's what I say to yeah. every president promises this, promises yeah. this, promises this, and then gets in the office. And we're all, once again, emotional. And, you know, a yes. lot of people probably not going to like me for this. Please don't stop listening to the show. But, you know, even with our good brother, uh, Obama, uh, who was, you know, the first African-American, quote unquote, president. Uh, once again, he did nothing specifically. Uh, no, for nothing specific. he, he did something specifically for, you know, the LGBT. The, that was his black people. If, if, if I had, you know, if. If you know he could, oh, I can't never do nothing specifically for black, but I can do something specifically for LGBTQ. I can do something specifically for immigrants. I can do something specifically for women. I can do something specifically for the banks, for the big businesses. And so, but people still will log and talk to him as you know. Oh, and you know, once again, people used to get mad at me. I was like, the second coming of Christ because. You know, yes. it was almost like people worshipped uh, him without really looking at the, the extent yes, of the policies that were yes. forced. And also, once again, the benign neglect of the constituents that championed him to get there. What What do you think? You, you're absolutely right, Rick. You, you're absolutely right, man. And uh, there's got to be a change. You know, if people got to get out of their emotions... And, and come to reality, you know, uh, what is going on, what is going, what is going to help us, you know, get out of the emotions. 
And man, I mean, I have people that, that won't, don't even want to speak to me. You know, I couldn't even hold a conversation with them. Has it gotten you know, better since since his time has went on? Has has it gotten okay. better when you we, because I used I used to watch those posts and I used to I used to see and look and you know y'all people were coming at you hard like you know deleting you I guess and everything. Have you been able yeah. to mend those relationships with your sisters and brothers? I think even a couple of family members maybe I don't know. Have you been able to mend those relationships as time has moved on? Yeah, with my family members, of course. And uh, because I can talk with you, I can debate with you and sit down and drink a cup of tea with you. But yes. you can't do it with me. They can't do it with me. Yeah. So so they got a love problem. They got they got something going on. Um, we should be able to debate and then sit down. We should still be friends or friendly mm -hmm. after that. But they can't do that. And the reason they can't do it because of the love in their heart. Oh. They don't have the agape love in their heart. And it takes agape love to debate you and then still love you. Mm -hmm. So, but and, I have been able to amend my family. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, once again, like I said, it's, it's a very emotional time. You know, people uh, with, with, with the, you know, once again, with the political sector. And, and once again, I don't, I don't put too much stake in that. But also mm -hmm. with with this with, with this pandemic, and yes. uh, you know the 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 division once again of people yeah. who who are for the uh, vaccine mandates and some people who are against the the vaccine mandates, and mm -hmm. uh, there's all you know once again it's, it's almost like okay well once again it's almost tooth and nail I can't talk to you anymore or you can't be around me if you don't believe. How I believe, and yes, uh, what do, do you, what what do you why why do you think it's such an emotionally high time? Like what you know, we've never had you know this much division. Uh, it's 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 what I you know I, I have my own reason, but why do you think it's so tooth and nail about these issues? Well, one one of it is is uh, the enemy has done this. Okay, the devil has done this. And the Bible says a house divided against itself cannot stand. Mm -hmm. If the devil can keep division about any subject between us, then we can never come together. So the man behind the system is Satan. He's just using these different agendas and these different topics to divide us. But the, the real culprit is Satan himself. That's why the Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness. This way, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So you have to be spiritually mature to know that you are not my enemy. Satan is the only enemy I got. You are not my enemy, but he makes you believe that you are your enemy and you are my enemy. When the real enemy is him, we should be able to. If, if you want to get the shot, hey, that's up to you. I don't want to get the shot. That's, that's, that's up to me. But you should not um, befriend me or you should not come against me because I decide not to get the shot. Mm -hmm. You know, but the enemy's doing this, man. Okay. And so where, where do, like I said, where, where does... Uh... Because it's hard. Like what? Once again, that I I always go back. Where does the church fall into this? Where, where you know? Where does the church step in, and you know, speak once again the truth, or or or, or preach the gospel, or once again preach the love of Christ? You know, where does where does faith also kick in? You know, what what you know? Whether it's faith or you know faith in God or faith in you know as they call it science or whatever. Where does you know, where does it all come to full circle? Well, the key, Rick, is we have to understand what love is. And the Bible says, first of all, love is kind. Mm -hmm. Okay. When is the last time I heard a message on being kind? So I can't remember. I know. So you have your opinion. But your opinion and my opinion should not divide us. 
And if I understood what love really is, I understand that love is kind. Love seeketh not its own. Love is not selfish. See, love is not easily puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemly. It seeketh not its own. So if we can understand what real love is, then I can love you in spite of the difference, in spite of your opinion. We don't understand what love is. And Jesus said that love is fulfilling of all the law. He said love is, is, is covers a multitude of sins. Love is the answer. But we don't know what love is. So therefore, we do exactly what love ain't. We are not kind. We are, we are irritable. We, we, are, we are selfish. We are prideful. We do the opposite of what love is. And it separates us. Mm. We got to get back to love. It's one word, love. Love. Simple. Love. Yeah. Simple. We've heard it for years, but we have not yet understand it. A husband and wife can't get along because they don't understand love. When they are about to love never fails, man. It never fails. So when a wife and husband even understand love, man, they got the greatest relationship they you. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. I think that uh, I see your you and your wife relationship, you know, is, is exemplifies love from on all aspects. Um, uh, another question because you know, since, since a child, you know, I, I've heard that we were living in the last days, you know, and a lot of you know, the things that. I've been looking at, you know, and, and reading, of course, you know, I've, I've studied the Bible, I studied the Bible, you know, back and forth, front to back. And uh, a lot of the things that, you know, I've, I've read looks, you know, really looks like they're, you know, coming true. And I actually probably was was even back then, you know, but as a little child, when I didn't quite understand, you know, it talks about wars and rumors of wars. It talks about pestilence. It talks about people being lovers of pleasure more than God, men being effeminate, being boasters, uh, lovers of money, uh, incontinent, fierce, uh, all of these things that we see uh, in not only just America and in the world. And it's the scripture that says, uh, you know, Jesus said, you know, all these things must come. Yes. Right? He said all yes. these things must come. You know, how do we know the end is here? And, you know, Jesus tells you, you know, okay, you're going to have this. You're going to you see violence. You're going to see pestilence. All of yes. these things. So if, and my question is is, is to you or, or, or to anyone, uh, now that these, we see these things are coming or, or, or the prophecies are being fulfilled, uh, do we pray against these things? You know, or do, you know, do we pray against, you know, uh, diseases or, or do we pray against, you know, wars or we pray against, you know, evil, you know, spiritual wickedness in high places. All of, if, if all of these things must come to pass, then wouldn't it be futile to pray against them? If, you know, Jesus says these things are going to come anyway. So why are we praying? OK, well, you know, we can't pray it away if it's God's will. And these things yeah. must come before, you know, Jesus come. What? What is you know what's that you know I I I just got I I got deep questions you know so and you know I'm not saying it's a right answer or a wrong answer I just want you know your take on that because it it just baffles me sometimes like okay well if this is God's will why am I praying against it or praying very good very good question very good question Rick and you know the thing is um it's always good to pray against evil and bad um. But we pray because we don't know when um, the end is going to come. So we can't stop praying because the end might not come for another 50 years. Mm -hmm. So we can't just sit back and say, since God said that these things are going to happen, they said that 100 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. I mean, as a kid, to be honest, I mean, I used... You know, we, you know, our church, you know, we, you know, we, 
it was, it, you know, Pastor Boja preached, you know, God is coming back like a thief in the night. Yeah. You better be yeah. ready. He's coming any day yeah. now. And I would be at home sometimes and I would go, I would might wake up and I would go in my mama's room and she may be in the bathroom or something or she may have went to work, but I, I would see her night clothes laying on the bed <laughs> and I didn't see nobody. And I'm like, oh, Lord. And I was running around the house and see nobody. But, ah, I missed the rapture. You know, Amen. Yeah. it was such yeah. a fear, you know, yes. of, of not being ready. So I, I say that to say, like, yeah, like you said, I've been hearing this. I've been living. OK, well, when is it going to happen? You know, for the last 40, whatever year, 40, 44 in February. So, uh, yeah, that, you know, that's uh, that's 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 something that has always, like you said, been said. Yeah. And you like, you, I guess you never know. And see, and the Bible says, uh, no man know the day nor the hour that the Son of Man come. So we don't know, but yet we got to keep crying aloud and spurring not. We got to keep preaching the gospel because uh, the world could come to the end tomorrow for somebody if they die in their sins. Okay, okay. Okay, so we got to keep preaching. We got to keep proclaiming it. As if it, it if it is tomorrow. Cause even though the, the rapture itself might not be tomorrow, but uh we got to tell tell them just like it may happen tomorrow, because like I said, their tomorrow could end. The rapture for them could be tomorrow. So we gotta keep telling it like it is, man. And uh and the Bible says you leave the time and seasons in the hand of God. Only God knows. But Rick, hey. Uh, that could be 50 years from now. And then, of course, there are certain things that we know according to the book of Daniel. It talks about when you shall see uh, the desolation of abomination. When you see things like that happening. Oh, they said, you know, you know it's at the door. Break, break, break that down to, to in layman's turn. The desolation of abomination because that's, you know, that's something that has always puzzled me. Because those, those are two words. I know what desolation and I know what abomination is. What is the desolation of abomination? I think it uh, was sitting in the temple or something like that. If I'm not yes. mistaken. Yes. So what what, yes. what is from your studies? What does that mean? It basically what it means is when it when it when the day come uh, when the antichrist is going to proclaim himself God. Okay, that's the point that you know there's a point no return okay. and. Now, is it is it a spirit of Antichrist? Because I've, I've heard two things, the Antichrist and that's I hear the spirit of Antichrist in the scriptures. I've seen both. So now, is that going to be a person or is it just, once again, the spirit of Antichrist? Because, you know, you got se several people who have called themselves God or, you know, even it, it, it it's almost like, and I look at this in entertainment, where we worship athletes we worship musicians uh we worship yes. entertainers in a godlike yes. manner so is that what they're talking about the spirit of antichrist or is that antichrist is going to be a particular individual well paul said that in his day he's talking about the spirit of antichrist was there in his day he said okay. there are many antichrists so it was the spirit in his day but according to revelation uh, it talks about a man that's going to uh, arise on the scene, and this man is going to demand that everybody take his mark, and his mark is a number, 666. And whoever will not take the mark of this man, then they're going to be beheaded and things of that nature. So at that time, it will be a man. Right now, it's the spirit of, listen, even if a person comes against Christ, they are antichrist. You're right. You're right. You know what so yeah. It's a spirit. But during that day, it would be a man, a physical man that will uh, come on the scene and uh, will proclaim himself to be God. Okay. And 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 you mentioned once again that a, 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 a word or a phrase that always perplexes people as well. You mentioned the mark of the beast. Okay. And many people have, you know, either misconceptions or opinions 
on what that actually is. Uh, some people even uh, I've heard some people say, well, that that's the vaccine because, you know, you, you can't go certain places. You may not even be able to work, which means you can't buy or sell. Or so what if from from your studies and your understanding, what exactly uh, is that mark that they are talking about? The, the, like at, this vaccine is like a um, how can I put? It? It's like a precursor of what is to come. Okay. And it shows us how mankind will fall prey to um, government demands, mm -hmm. even though he may not necessarily have to. Right now, he still will be um, easily give in to governmental authority mm -hmm. but when this day comes there is not there's gonna be no you have no choice okay there will be no we got choice now okay when that day comes there will be no choice because it says that every man uh and he and he calls it all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in the right hand uh, in their foreheads and that no man might bow or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the name of his name. You will have no choice at that point. We got a choice now. As a matter of fact, the, 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 um, the uh, Supreme Court just shot down uh, Biden's uh, mandate about large companies have to um, demand their employees to get the vaccine. They okay. shot that down today. So that's no longer in effect. But okay. when, when this time happened, you won't have a choice. Okay. So what what do you I mean, so would it just be like okay, a mark, you know, a chip? Some people say it might be a chip that they want to put in you so you can they can identify you or something. Uh because yeah. I know what they said it's gonna be, you know, the mark of the beast if I if I remember scripture correctly, it was have gonna have to be in your hand or your head, right? Yes. He caused yes. every man to take a mark on his on the back of his hand. Or in his head. Could yes. Be. So it yeah, it would be something. It would, actually, that would, it would be a literal mark that you would have to have, either in your forehead or in uh, on your uh, on your hand. And if you don't have it, you won't be able to buy or sell anything. Hmm. You would have to have that mark. Okay. That's what the scripture says. Yeah. So, so once again, Revelation. Revelation has a lot of, you know, has a lot of mystery. I guess in it, uh, they talk about a, the uh, is it the thousand year reign or or or, or it's a time where the devil is going to have reign on the earth. Now, is that now? Is is that what we're seeing now, or that's to still to come? Because that's I, still to come. I, I, okay, so. It's, it's going to yeah. be a while where, where the devil has reign of the earth and then God come back and reign for a thousand years, right? Yeah, for a thousand years, yeah. Okay. And um, that would be a, 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 a time uh, in Revelation where uh, Christ will reign over all the, over the nations for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. And um, Satan will be bound for a thousand years. And so here's the thing, even though you, Satan is bound, uh, uh -huh. Satan is bound, and he will not he, he will have no influence at that time, man will still be evil and doing evil during that during that during that time and still will not want to serve Christ, even though Satan is, is, is bound and locked up. So you know. Man is man's heart is evil. Man's heart is depraved, and Satan influences him. But his heart, the Bible says, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So, even with Satan bound for a thousand years, man still gonna do evil. So now the tribulation. There's a, you yes. know, talked about the tribulation. So are we living in that now, or is that still to come? Because that's still to come. Supposed to last like what seven years? It's a seven year period. Seven years. Yeah, and see what happens in the seven year tribulation is the Antichrist is going to come on the scene in the beginning, and uh, he's going to solve all the world problems. He's mm -hmm. going to be the man with all the answers. He's going to solve the political problem. 
the religious problem, the economic problem, uh, the military problem. He is going to be the most intelligent man the world has ever seen. And the reason is because uh, Satan is going to incarnate him, just like God um, lived in Christ. We know he was Christ, but he was in a, in a, in a body, a man's body. Satan is going to fully uh, envelope a man. The Antichrist is going to be Satan in bodily form, walking around. And for the first and a half years, he's going to be everybody, they're going to love him. But in the middle of the seven-year period, he's going to turn on everybody and declare himself God. Yes. Yeah. And they can see him for who he is. Yeah. I, I, I remember reading that. So we, we're going to go from Revelations to Genesis now in the beginning because what's like these are questions I hear all the time and you know I, I have a, I have a lot of uh friends or people or associates that ask these questions because you know they're they're doubters or you know that they're, they're, they're they 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 do not understand so you no know, these are questions that sometimes I'll be like hey man you got a point like I I you know I you know I know what the Bible says about it but you know I I, it does it doesn't talk about this like just just one particular question I always hear people say if there were two people Adam and Eve and then they only had two sons and then you know of course Cain killed Abel and God put a mark on his head to say okay well whoever sees him wouldn't kill him so that means okay there's other people where did those people come from also he says you know Cain took a wife of the land of maybe not or something like that or, or where he, he went somewhere and found a wife but once again the people always okay if there were two people on earth adam and eve and then they had two sons where did these other people come from mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know many things the bible does not reveal mm -hmm. and it tells us foolish questions and fables and genealogies avoid okay Fables okay. and genealogies. Fables, it says neither give heed to fables okay. and endless it says endless genealogies, okay. which minister questions rather than God edifying, which is in faith. So, in other words, God is saying, All these questions that people have, okay, it has nothing to do with God edifying, and it's just man's uh lust. For, for just wanting to know things instead of serving God by faith. Okay. So he said endless genealogy, meaning that there's no end to these questions. And if right. there's whatever God wants us to know is right here. Anything before this is too early. Anything after this is too late. <laughs> I, got we got, I got it. We got 66 books, Rick. 66 books uh, the answer the questions that god and give us the answers that god want us to know mm -hmm. and the bible says that uh if all the things that jesus did was recorded it says the word itself could not contain the books of all the things that he did but god did not see fit to record everything he gave us four gospels. That's it. Say so either you take this by faith and believe this by faith, or like the like like he told the man, even if somebody came from the dead and told you something, you was you still wouldn't believe it. It's by faith, Rick. It's by faith. We just got to accept this thing by faith. Okay, I think it's Ecclesiastic, the twelfth chapter, I guess, said uh you know, of, of many books and many studies, there is no end. But the end of the yeah, matter no of God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. So I guess yeah. that's 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 that answers that question. That's a very good point, Rick. Very good point. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Feel yeah. God, keep his commandment. That's the whole duty of me. Yeah, let me see. Okay, I guess. Oh, okay. So I guess they were they were back a ways back talking about eating. Uh, uh, the Bible is the world's greatest book of all time. Nothing can compare to it. Uh, my brother Rodney Grimes, I guess he offers up a question. 
Uh, wasn't it other books that were not put in the Bible? Uh, let me see. The kingdom of God should never uh, divide, be divided for nobody. Real love is unconditional. Yes. Question. Will you pray against God's will? That's that. That's that's what I was. I guess that's the question I was asking, Brother Harris, uh, when I was like, you know, if if things are already preordained, you know, what can we do uh, to uh, question them? And and that is a question. Uh, is also too like there was other books uh, or where you know other books in the Bible. I guess. Uh, you know, from my understanding, uh, there you know there were several different versions of the Bible even before the King James version. So all of these Bibles and all these writings went to this one because actually, you know, my uh, my my uh, my 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 daughter's mother she had a Bible and it had the Book of Maccabees, uh, First and Second Maccabees. It had First and Second Tobit. Uh, it had the Book of Wisdom and things like that. So uh, you know, I guess he's he's saying you know. Why were those other books not put in? And, you know, once again, if, 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 you know, people would study, I guess, who King James was, and it was the King James authorized version. That means he authorized the only those 66 books that we have now, but there were other books that he didn't authorize. Now, once again, if, if from my studies of King James, he wasn't a saint. You know, from my understanding, he didn't believe in God. He was involved in all sorts of perversions. But at that time, he had the power to say, OK, well, I rule the world. So I'm going to put these books in there and leave all the other books out. Are we to discount those other books because of, you know, King James was in power and, and, and discarded those other books? And, and that's a good, good question. Very good question. Rick. And, and, you know, what we have to understand is that God will use any man that he deemed necessary to get his will done. OK, that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. God chose Judas. To be one of the 12. Now, here's, here's why he chose Judas. Jesus knew he had a devil with him. He said, have not I chose you 12 and one of you is a devil. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the scripture had to be fulfilled. And God knew that the other eleven would not betray Christ for nothing in this world. But he knew Judas would betray him. So Judas had, had to be in the twelve to fulfill scripture. It had to be fulfilled. Judas was a, Judas is called the, the son of perdition, meaning one that was destined to do this. So he was born, he had a choice, but he was born, God knew he was going to do this without hesitation. He was the only one of the 12 that would have done it. And as far as the other books, um, Paul said in Galatians, he said, um, he said, I call you to the grace of Christ to another gospel, which is not another. He said, but there'll be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. He said, though we or an angel of heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then which preach unto you, let him be a curse. You know what he said? He said this twice. If anybody bring anything other than these books here, mm -hmm. he said, let him be a curse. Not that those books were not good books, uh, books that could have been here, but God did not deem it necessary for them to be here. And it goes back to endless genealogies, fables, questions. Mm -hmm. I write many books. There is no end. So it's good faith. But, but I, I got to ask you this one last question. <laughs> you know, I think because you mentioned Paul, right? And so Paul, he actually didn't walk with Christ. He came later. And, you know, he yes. had versions on, 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 on Damascus and he wrote, you know, a better part of yes. the New Testament. And, you know, in yes. a lot of, you know, of course, I've studied Paul's writing in a lot of his writings, you know, he says, OK, well, I'm not speaking as, you know, I'm, I'm speaking as Paul now or I'm speaking in my preference. Like even he had one verse to say, OK, well, uh, I prefer it's better for a man not to get married. 
You know, that's why yeah. you know, I would say a man shouldn't get married, but it's better to marry than burn. So, you know, that was his choice or his opinion. Also, uh, in, in the latter part of his writing, he even said, you know, well, I suffer not a woman to teach. You know, I, you know, a, 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 a woman should, you know, you, you know, not usurp a man's authority. All of those things that, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, think those were his words, not God's words. You know, those were, and he even says, okay, no, I'm just speaking as, you know, I'm speaking as Paul now, you know. So that one man's letter, that one man letters have sometimes been taken, you know, as the the word of God or, or you know, God speaking because, you know, uh, as as he said himself, all scripture is given by the, the, ex, uh, the express uh, in, innovation of God. But in that, you know, he has other scriptures where he said, well, this is what I would do. So some people, and of course, you know, from, from you know, some people still this, to this day, because of what Paul said, won't won't respect the woman preacher. Yes. You know, yes. you have preachers or, you know, you have what, yes. you know, still people who won't wear pants and stuff like that. Yes. So yes. I, I say that to say, you know, where do we separate Paul's words from God's words? If that makes sense, what I'm asking. Yeah, it does. It, it does, Rick. And what we have to understand is that's uh, First Corinthians seven chapter, and Paul said, "But I speak this by permission, and not a commandment." So God allowed him to put this in here, and mm -hmm. He's telling us outright. This thing here, I'm speaking it by permission. In other words, God has permitted me to say this. It's not a command. Okay. But I, I have been given permission to say this. So what that means is you're not going to go to hell for not doing this or for doing this. Yeah. It's not a commandment. It's just I've been given permission to say this. You take it like you want to. If you don't want to get married, that's up to you. If you do want to get married, it's up to you. It's not a commandment. So it says it's not a commandment. Then that tells me then that it's not something I have to do. But that's maybe one or two verses that he said in the, all the books that he read. So people may try to isolate that scripture and find fallacy. Yeah. But Rick, these, yeah. these people will find fallacy with anything. <laughs> <laughs> they look it's almost like if you look for the positive in something you're going to find the positive if you look for the negative if you're looking to tear it down you're going to find something to tear it down you know yes, those, sir, those are you know once again I, I'm, I'm just a, I'm just a thinker so you know when somebody hits with a question I'm like okay well you gotta you know you got a point but you know some certain questions I don't even try to answer you know I, I know my beliefs and I you know I know what my heart stands so I don't I don't, you know, That's I don't get into those discussions anymore, but I know that I can bring them to you and you can, you know, give me, you know, different insight with, with love. And what's you, you ain't, you ain't talking up here. You flipping, you flipping the pages right there. So you giving me you no know, Bible. So, you know, I definitely, you know, thank you for, you know, just, uh, you know, answering all of those questions, because once again, those, those are questions that a lot of people hear and a lot of people, you know, will be afraid to answer or, you know, not have the scriptural reference to back up, you know, what they're saying. So I thank you, man, for for, for your years of study. And uh, Moringa, let's talk about Moringa real quick. Now, you were a big champion of Moringa. And like I hadn't heard about it until I had my stroke in 2018. Uh, actually, we're coming up on about three years. No. I had four years. Wow. So, but yeah, my mama, you know, I, and I was all worried about, you know, what, what, what should I do? And, and she said, well, Dexter Jones has this, you know, powder moringa. You should, you should get to this. And, and so, you know, I got it and, you know, I took it, I ordered a couple of, uh, you know, packets mm -hmm. of it. And, you know, I, I haven't, you know, I, of course I changed a lot of things as well, but, you know, I, I, I credit that, you know, to, to, to bringing me back to, uh, you know, good health and, 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 and starting me on my road to, you know, being more cognizant of, you know, what I put in my body and, you know, keeping myself 
uh, healthy. Explain to the people the benefits of Moringa and why you champion it uh, as such. Uh, the, the the one thing about Moringa, uh, Rick, is um, when I am doing different events, mm -hmm. I ask people one question. I tell them, I said, do this for me. I said, go to Google and ask Google this one question. And the question is, what is the most nutritious plant in the world? Okay, that's the question. What is the most nutritious plant in the world? Hold on, I, I got Google. my phone right here. Hold on, let me see. Let me, let me go to Google. 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 Yeah, see what Google say. <laughs> what is the most nutritious <laughs> we plant? We right, right here live now, so. Yes, sir. <laughs> what is the most nutritious plant in the world? Yes, let's see what Google say. Plant. Yes. What is the most nutritious most plant most in the position? First thing, smoking. It's a moringa. If y'all don't see, it says it says moringa right there. So he, <laughs> you, you right. See, so you talk about there's over three hundred thousand plants discovered by man to date, and uh -huh. out of over three hundred thousand, moringa is the most nutritious plant in the world. Moringa is the only plant that has. Uh, all the, 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 the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients, the antioxidants, the amino acids, the anti-inflammatory compounds, all the omegas, everything is in this one plant. When God made this tree, he made this tree for me, okay? Uh, and Moringa is what's called an adaptogen. And what it is, an adaptogen is a special class of herbs that acts like a, th a thermostat. It gives you energy and focus at the same time it calms your body. So it basically works to bring the body back into balance. Out of all the thousands of herbs, only a few are classified as adaptogen, and my ring is one of them. It goes into your body, and it adapts to what your body needs, and it does for your body what your body needs. So it adapts to each individual body, because that's what I always say. Like, people say, well, eat this, or next thing you know, well, you can't eat eggs, or... Yo, well, milk is good. Oh, no, don't eat milk. Oh, don't eat collards. Oh, eat collards. And every, but I yes. always remember everybody's body is different. So, what works yes. for your body might not work for my body. So, is that yes. what you're saying? Moringa actually adapts to what your body needs and caters, caters its, its effectiveness to what your specific body is, is, is makeup needs. You got it. See, because it's, it's considered an adaption, it helps to increase resistance to stress, while the, uh, the stress is physical, chemical, or biological, and it helps bring the body back into balance, no matter where the stress is coming from. And it does not interfere with your body's normal functions. It's the only plant that does that. So you said it has no side effects, basically. No side effects. No side effects. The Moringa leaves has no side effect. I've seen people from high blood pressure to dementia. Uh, I had a I had a, a client that was dealing with stomach cancer, and uh, I told he was scheduled for, for chemo. I told him what to eat, what's not to eat, and he began to take moringa. He called me back a month later. They canceled his his uh, chemo, and it continued. It changed his whole life. I mean, completely changed his whole life. Yes. Yeah. My it brother adapts. Roger Grimes said, is it easy to get the Moringa? The real Moringa, the real Moringa comes from Africa, India, and the Philippines. 95% of the Moringa in America has additives, fillers, and preservatives in it. So we don't deal with the Moringa in America. We get out from Africa and India. That's okay. for the real Moringa. See, because um, the ground that it grows in determines how uh, the, pop, the, the potency of the nutrients that comes up. And, and in America, powerful store, soil. the soil. So in America, we got so many, you know, so much going on in the soil yeah. that you don't get all the nutrients when it comes up. So, yeah, um, it, it all doesn't work the same. I've had people that go to Amazon and cause they can get it cheaper <laughs> and, uh, and get the Moringa. 
And uh, I had one lady in particular that had lost about 15, 20 pounds. She got on the one on Amazon. I came back to me a month later. She had gained a weight back. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, she, she, she said, I'll never, leave, she said, I'll never leave you again. She said she never what? She would never leave us again. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's easy to get, I guess, Mr. Grabs. You can go to the website, which is eatingwellness.com. It is listed up there in the comments as well. Uh, Brother, Brother Brody said, do you still have it at the village? Yes, I do. Okay, so he still has it at the village as well. Um, so with with that, because you mentioned something earlier, uh, with the medicine, you know, once again, like it's 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 almost like they give us this medicine that actually makes your body worse. So is yeah. is moringa a good preventative measure for sickness? Moringa is an excellent preventive, and I tell people to become proactive with your body. See, Rick, our bodies was never designed for medicine. Okay, it was never designed for medicine. Here's the only reason you're supposed to take medicine. There's one reason to take medicine for an emergency. That's it. Okay. If, you, if you're in a car accident, you have to have an operation. Um, that's the only time to put medicine in your body. Medicine is not meant to stay on for 10, 15 years uh, trying to uh, stabilize your blood pressure, your diabetes. God's given urge for that. Psalms 104 and 14 said, and he gave urge for the service of man. That means to aid man, to help man, to assist man. Not medicine. Medicine only for emergency. Every medicine has side effects. There's not a medicine on the planet that does, that does not have side effects. All of them. It's a scripture, I think. It's in Revelation 20, 21. It talks about uh, and the leaves of the trees will be the healing of the nations. So yes. that's what I always think about when, when I think about, actually, that's what I thought about when I first had that stroke and my mom was in Marine good and it's okay, leaves, yes. leaves are going to be the healing of the nation. So yes, definitely. Uh, and, 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 the leaves, and the leaves are the most important part of Marine. It's the leaves. Okay. And, and, but your Marine is ground up, right? When you get it, it's ground up and you, you take what a teaspoon a day. Yes, with the powder, you take one teaspoon a day, or either with the capsule, you take three a day. Okay. And with that, with the with with that teaspoon, do you put it in water? Because I, I I can't remember. I need to get some more now to think about it. But uh Yeah. So you put you it in put just it in water. regular a bottle of water like this, a teaspoon, or is that too much water? Yeah, that's really too much water. When I first began, I used to put in a whole bottle of water. Yeah, but now we got what's called. Yeah, that's a lot of water, you know, when okay. you're drinking that moringa. Okay. And now we got a shot, okay. which is one shot, you know, and you drink that one shot, and and that's it. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely right there. But yeah, it's, it's, it's the, in, in the medical industry, like I said, it just it just gives us all these pills. And sure. you take one pill, and then that, that you take one pill for, for, for your for your uh, blood pressure, and then your kidneys mess up. And then you have to take a pill for your kidney, and then you know mm -hmm. your skin start getting discolorated. Then <laughs> you got to take it. Got to take another pill for your skin discoloration crazy, and give give your foot acne or whatever. Whatever. Rick, so. It's crazy, man. Rick, I've seen people, man, that was on fifteen to twenty different medicines. It's crazy, and then they would go to another doctor. And the doctor will ask them, why are you taking all these medicines? You know, so it's crazy, man. You got to become proactive. You got to look out for yourself, first and foremost. You know, and yeah. God's given us herbs that can help us because a person has high blood pressure. The main thing they're dealing with, they're deficient in a potassium, calcium, and magnesium. Those are three main things that they're, they're deficient in. And the very blood pressure medicine is depletes their body of potassium of those things okay yeah so they, so, the, so their blood pressure um will always be unstable because Fenty. of yeah yeah it, yeah so you got to take the medicine so what do, what does a person do uh who's facing blood blood pressure uh problems like would moringa help or to, of course change diet and things like that 
Change dice would, would help, definitely help, and Moringa would definitely help. Uh, I had a customer that uh, could not get their blood pressure medicine for a little over a month. And uh, when they was able to go back to the doctor, uh, the doctor did a physical um, and said, check the blood pressure. Said, the blood, your blood pressure is very good. Said, it looks really good. Said, um, you know, just keep taking your medicine. You're looking really good. And he said, well, look, doc, um, I haven't been able to get my blood pressure medicine for over a month. And uh, I've been taking this thing called Moringa. And uh, the doctor told him, stop taking that Moringa and get back on your blood pressure medicine. <laughs> I mean, it stabilized the blood pressure. Uh -huh. So they're not concerned to the point of you of your health, per se, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. They're concerned about keeping you on medicine. Yeah, because I think they probably get paid, you know, based, you know, the pharmaceutical companies actually pay them to prescribe yes. that medicine. You know, so they got thing that. that people don't really understand about the medical industry. And uh yes, sir. and and one thing uh I was listening to, even about you know the current situation with, with the vaccine, I was listening to at the end of the year, I was listening to a, a, a news program that says Pfizer has made over four hundred something, something, something billion dollars. Yes. And then, but yes. what, 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 what sparked my 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 mind was, he said, and they are projected to make this such and such and such and such, such amount with all the new contracts they got. Yes. So I started thinking, okay, okay, so this isn't about health. This is about yes. money. They have contracts, yes. so they have to advertise. Hey, we got free vaccines, or you know, you need to get this vaccine because. They're projected. It's it's not about health. It's not about a health thing. It's a money thing. So that's when I start hearing, oh, well, yeah, we, you know, everybody, you better get it because it's they're projected to make this. Yes. It, but in order to make that, they have to have a certain amount of people to got to. So uh, that's one thing that kind of you know spark spark my spidey senses, as they say. But uh, you yes, know, and I definitely. Uh, you know, once again, just when 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 I had that stroke, they put me on about three or four pills, and mm -hmm. I looked up the stat. I first thing I did was went to Google and looked up the side effects of the pills, and yes. I started reading and reading and reading. And I was like, I I don't want to be on this for you know the rest of my life. So then, once again, I, I started back exercising i started researching for so I, I i got the moringa moringa i started doing things like black seed oil but i started researching foods to eat what foods to eat to lower your blood pressure or keep your there blood you pressure high and i just continue to eat those things and i haven't been on blood pressure medicine within about Three, three, three. At three months after I had the stroke, I, I stopped taking the medicine. The, the medicine, you know, and my I check my blood pressure now. It's it's, it's regular. That's because of course lifestyle changes, uh, diet changes, yes, also uh, just stress yeah. as well. You know, lowering my stress intake. So, yeah. but uh, and, and if it was up to them, they will kept they would have kept you on your blood pressure for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah, that's guaranteed money. Guaranteed money. Yeah, and and that's what you know, people. And and I talk to people. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take this for the rest of my life. I'm well, I'm gonna be taking this for the rest of my life. So it's definitely a you know, and I and I have family members and you know friends who work for the pharmaceutical company, mm -hmm. and of course they you know they always side with you know Medicaid, and, and you know they actually they actually do clinical trials, which means they're trying out these things and one thing i always tell people is they they practice medicine that's it that's why it's called some medical practice and because they're practicing yes. on you you know they're practicing on you yes. so it's yes. uh it's definitely man something to be cognizant of man but i definitely like the way you continuously push promote and educate people on healthcare like we were talking earlier in the show you went you brought out all those step stats about you know how much death is caused just by these common diseases that we think are hereditary, but they're just really because of the food we eat. Yes, sir.
Yeah, but so man, we we're going on two hours, man. I know I I, I, I want to let you go because I keep you here about twelve o'clock if you let me, man. <laughs> I just want to thank you so much uh, for just engaging with me, uh, giving me, you know, your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding, your expertise, uh, you know, just 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 giving, you know, biblical perspective on all of these issues uh, that I talk about, man. I, like I said, I wish I could keep going, but I definitely I have to get back as well. But I definitely want to thank you. Uh, for you know, sharing your your wisdom with me. And is, is there anything else that you want to leave uh, with the audience? Yeah, I just want to say, Rick. You know, I talk about you a lot with my wife, and um, one thing I want to ask you: I always ask her, "How in the world is Rick out there selling those books like that?" <laughs> Rick, you don't even, you don't even know these people. <laughs> nah. I mean, man, they these people buy your books. And I know it's an anointing on it. That's what it's an anointing. And God's giving you grace, you yes. know, to go out there and, and sell those books like that, man. Because, you know, that's something that, that that's not in me to do. But, bro, I'm telling you, man, <laughs> God has blessed you, bro. You can do it. <laughs> hey, thank you, man. Thank you. And I, once again, I give all the glory and honor to God for, you know, just. And, and that's what I said. Like, I always pray before I go out. You know, I pray that God will put the right people in my path. I pray that, you know, he will be humble, uh, you know, let let his voice speak through me, let his light shine on me. And, you know, I, I can just be there talking to somebody else or somebody sometimes will stop me. Hey, what you got there? You know, and, and wow. it's, you know, it just it just be. And, you know, and, and sometimes I attribute to my career in sales, like all my life I've been in sales. So I never meet a stranger. You know, so it's easy for me to just walk up to complete strangers because, you know, I, I have no, you know, I have no fear. I don't meet strangers. So, um, but thank you for that, man. Thank you. You're operating in your gift, Rick. You're yeah. operating in your gift. And that makes it easy. It's yeah, not, yeah. there's no trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, man. I, I really appreciate that, though, man. I, I really appreciate that. Now, it's, it's, I get a lot of no's, though, but, you know, but once okay. again, it's always... Yeah. He always, you know, just send somebody to keep me going. Send, send somebody to keep me going. And, you know, that's why I just give all the glory and honor. But you definitely, I got, I'm on my fifth one now. So what you said to me, what other subjects have you written about uh, besides the ones that we talked about? You can't even remember. You started thinking, what, what, what are some of the subjects that you wrote about? Here's one that uh, I just did last year called How to Master Life. Mm -hmm. And I have one that's coming out um, next month called The Seven Keys to Excellence in Marriage Within the Next 30 Days. Seven. Okay. I'm a, wait, so you mean I can read that book and get married in 30 days? Well, <laughs> what, it, what, it do, it's what it does, it, it, it helps a married couple that okay. have a problem their marriage to take their marriage from bad to good, from good to great, and from great to excellent within the okay. next 30 days. All right, okay. All right. I have to have to, mm -hmm. I have to get that on when I when I take that step. But uh Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, man. This it's been a pleasure. I do want to thank all of our listening audience. Uh much love to you, Mr. Grimes, as well. I appreciate you for tuning in. Uh, Patula Jones, thank you for allowing my husband. No, thank you for allowing me to share your husband. And I wish continuously blessings uh, on you as well. My brother uh, Brody, uh, thank you so much, Doug, man, for tuning in. Uh, we go up a little more. Miss Robinson, uh, thank you as well. Pure word, I have eaten tonight, she said. The true word of God. Thanks, Pastor Dexter. Pastor Dexter, thank you so much as well, Mama, for listening uh as well uh my good friend uh tabernacle as well felicia mitchell thank you so much too fine i think that's what we used to call him. yes good groceries uh so many people sister harris tabernacle as well uh thank you so much the kingdom of god should never be divided for nobody or nothing great my good brother uh brother harris thank you once again for tuning in 
Uh, I can go on. Rev Gotti the man. What's going on, man? Thank you. I met this brother in Suffolk out there. And uh, he introduced me to Mr. Grimes, man. I love y'all as well. Uh, Joyu, Aunt Joyu, thank you as well for tuning in. Uh, Ms. Smith, Mon, I really enjoyed the teaching. Thank you. Shaheen, Brother Shaheen, thank you for tuning in as well. So many people, man. I just thank all of y'all. Pastor Taylor, thank you. My dad, Patricia Warren. Uh, I don't want to miss anybody. Chrissy, Chrissy Love, thank you so much. Uh, Chrissy Love. Uh, just so many people for tuning in. I certainly thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, and I will be back to Tuesday uh, at 8 p.m. I got another special guest, uh, another young brother who's doing some great things. But I, I, once again, I just want to thank you, man, for, for allowing us to pick your brain and share some of your knowledge. And once again, I thank you for encouraging us and I uh, thank you for the words of encouragement as well. Thank you. We definitely going to do this again. Good man. Thank All you, right. Bob. I really appreciate it, Bob. All thank right. You. Thank you. Y'all have a good night. Good night, Sister, Sister Jones, as well. Thank y'all for tuning in as well. God bless. Bless you. Mm.